Welcome to this instructional video to finish up chapter 6. So we just went into great detail about the mechanism of chymotrypsin. We talked about the catalytic triad, aspartic acid 102, histidine 57, serine 195. Again, this is what we called the catalytic triad. And of course, serine-195, its backbone atoms played a role in the oxyanion hole. So, here's what we do. We think about what would be the effect of certain mutations. And so, let's start here. Serine-195 alanine. Well, we know that serine played a very important role in the mechanism its main role was to uh, play the role of a nucleophile attacking the carbonyl of the substrate. And again, don't, don't, uh, this can be confusing. This is like enzyme on protein action or protein on protein action. The substrate is a protein. It's got a peptide bond that's going to be cleaved. And the enzyme, chymotrypsin, is, of course, uh, a protein as well. So serine-195 to alanine, again, we know how this works. What effect might this have on the enzyme activity? Well, 1 to 3, where 1 is diminished, 3 is abolished. Uh, on this one, I think we're going to have to go with a big 3 because, um, and again, what's a good explanation for this? And the explanation needs to cut right to the heart of the issue. And the issue is serine-195 plays the role of a nucleophile because it's got an OH group that becomes deprotonated by histidine and you get a nice oxyanion nucleophile. Alanine is a methyl group. Methyl groups aren't nucleophiles. Why did you spend a whole year in organic chemistry for? Well, who knows, but that's one reason. Okay, so ala. will never, let's just put that in, in big, uh, all caps, will never play the role of a nucleophile. And of course, if you are on the exam, if you're pressed on that further, then you would go into OH can be O minus, good nucleophile, methyl group never a nucleophile. All right, so what about another one? Serine-195 cysteine. Hmm, interesting. So we had an OH versus CH3 here. Well, I, just, just for full disclosure, this is really CH2OH for serine and just CH3 for alanine. That was really the comparison, right? Well, here the comparison is CH2OH and CH2SH. Interesting. Hydroxyl versus thiol group. Oxygen and sulfur uh, are in the you know same column of the periodic table. They have similar properties. What do you think about this? Well, I'm thinking that. You know, I think I would go with a 1 here. And again, I th let's, let's ex explain why that would be. If you put 2 and you have the right explanation, then that's fine. I'm not going to, I'm not that concerned with 1 or 2 or 2 or 3, as long as you understand the, uh, the explanation. Okay? So, or you provide a good explanation. What would I say here? The, the thiol group of cysteine can play a similar role as hydroxyl Of serine and in this case what are those roles acid 
plus nucleophile is what we identified. And just to go even further, you've got CH2O minus was the serine based nucleophile, and they excuse me, the serine-based nucleophile, yes, and this would be the cysteine-based nucleophile. This is our old friend thiolate. I think we've mentioned this before. You know, it turns out that thiolate is even a stronger nucleophile than this alkoxide that we get with serine. So I, I, I'm feeling pretty good about, you know, maybe this is a one uh, because OH and SH can do very similar things. In fact, FYI, there are a whole class of proteases called thiol proteases instead of serine proteases. And so they have active site arrangements somewhat similar to chymotrypsin. Some of them do. So I think this would be one. And so according to kind of how we've been classifying mutations the one up here would be a radical mutation because there would be a large change in function this one would be probably a conservative mutation is what we would say all right well let's go ahead and do a, uh, a couple more of these uh, kind of mutation analysis. Histidine 57 alanine, well of course you know when we, we, we bring in alanine, alanine can't do a whole lot. It's just kind of a, uh, the methyl group is a bit of a silencer on what's going on. I think clearly uh, this would be a three but I need you to tell me specifically what the problem is and the problem would be ala, the side chain of ala will never play the role of acid or base. And as we, we just talked about the mechanism of chymotrypsin, histidine 57 played the role of an acid uh, at, well it started out in the role of a base and then ultimately in the mechanism it plays a role of an acid. Alanine can't do that. The methyl group cannot do that. And so that's that's the big problem. All right. Well, aspartic acid 102 glutamic acid. So what did what did aspartic acid 102? What did it contribute to the mechanism? It was kind of like a, a dual threat. It played a stru structural role at the beginning to help align histidine 57 and that was more of a hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonding issue and then the second step of the mechanism we talked about it really stabilized the transition state through TSSV oh, excuse me excuse me hashtag TSSVCN so you know aspartic acid glutamic acid or the acidic amino acid brothers uh, or sisters so I don't think this is a big deal here I think I would say one again the number I'm not that concerned about it's just understanding your explanation of it you know glue in theory although there may be some alignment issues if you chose one and you said glue can do the same things aspartic acid can do it can do it can do the Hydrogen bond to align histidine 57. It can stabilize the charge neutralization of the transition state. And you give it a 1, that's great. If you give it a 2 and you say that, but you bring up there may be some alignment issues, it's not exactly aspartic acid, I would take that as well. Okay, that's fine. So, just to get it on in the notes here, I would say here glue... can play the same role as aspartic acid so H bonding 
plus this. And then we could put a little bit of a qualifier on here. There could be some alignment issues. There we go. So I think that's that's pretty good for that. You know, another one, uh, what if we had S? 102 ooh asparagine wow interesting on this one i think probably uh i i think probably two or three maybe i think that's what i would have to go for i mean asparagine can play the same structural role that we talked about with the spartic acid 102 but it cannot be involved in transition state stabilization via charge neutralization that aspartic acid 102 was involved in because it can never be charged right obviously so again is the is the lack of the charge neutralization in the transition state enough to kill the enzyme i don't know that's why i think two or three would work here all right so the last thing with chymotrypsin is oh yeah ph dependence of chymotrypsin activity. So if you look at a plot of the rate or initial rate over here on the top right of chymotrypsin activity versus pH, you get our uh, beloved bell shape bell shaped curve. And so what is this telling you? Well it's telling you a, a couple of things. Right here at about We have a midpoint of the one of the midpoints is about pH seven, so that means there's an ionizable group with a pKa of about seven that's being uh, deprotonated, and it's increasing the activity of the enzyme. That's what it's telling you. That's what it's telling you. And then you reach some peak enzyme activity, and then there's another ionizable group about. Uh, has a pKa of about 9 where deprotonation is leading to a decrease in enzyme activity. Let me repeat all this. The bell-shaped curve is telling you there's an ionizable group involved with a pKa approximately 7 and when it deprotonates it increases the activity of the enzyme. On the, and then you reach peak enzyme activity, and then about 8, about pH 9 is the, is the other midpoint. That's telling you there's another ionizable group around that when it gets deprotonated, it hurts the enzyme activity. It decreases the enzyme activity. So we need to talk about what these two groups are. Okay, so let's do that though, and let's just kind of, I've kind of taken the plot and kind of split it in half just for our first discussion. So the first one is now, okay, think about this now. Think about this. We need a group with a pKa of about 7, and deprotonation increases enzyme activity. Oh, I hope you're feeling this too. Okay. I think we've got histidine 57 over here on the left side of this left of, of uh, at pH is below 7 okay we've got it in the acid form so it looks like this histidine 
you know, on paper it's 6, but I, you know it's modulated in the real world in enzymes. So the pKa could be 7. That makes sense, okay? So, but below 7, below, below pH 7, we've got some problems. Because histidine 57 is in the acid form. That's a big problem. Because histidine 57 gets the party started with this in, with this uh, enzyme activity right here. It needs to be a base. In fact, I don't even want to draw a line to that because it's not working. That's not right. It needs to be a base form. But at pH below 7, it's in the acid form. So this does not support the mechanism. And as a result, the activity is low. Yeah, you, you get below 7, you have very, very low activity. Very low activity. Okay? And again, these, oh, let's always do our uh, axes labeling here. Rate is very low. But hey, as you move across to a higher pH and you move across pH 7, here is histidine 57 now. All right. It is in the base form. And it's ready to abstract a proton off serine 195 because we know that's how the mechanism works. And it makes serine 195 more nucleophilic. And in fact, up here in the mechanism, right here, we don't even show it forming the oxyanion. We just show a concerted mechanism. So here we go. This happens at pH above 7 and this certainly supports the mechanism of the enzyme so the first ionizable group clearly clearly histidine 57 um, but now we've got this issue of an ionizable group a pKa of about 9 I think you should go back and look at the mechanism and think about it and tell me what you think could be something that has a pKa of about 9 that when it's deprotonated you lose enzyme activity. So I think you should stop the video. Pause it. Please don't stop. Pause the video and see what you think. Now here's the deal. You're not going to get this right because there's something I haven't told you yet. And so on a test I'd have to give you more information. Okay, uh, but when you think of pKa of about nine, what's the where does that fall? Well, guess what? That falls right about right about the pKa of an alpha amino group. Okay, and you say you may say, well, there's no alpha amino group shown in this mechanism. That's true. But there is an alpha amino group that's going to become clear in a few minutes that plays a very important role. So page 55 just kind of reviews of what we talked about. Okay, We've got something at 9. What could it be? In the past, people have told me, I bet serine 195 has a perturbed pKa. And I would say, you know what? That might be true. But deprotonation of serine 195 supports the mechanism. It does not work against the mechanism. So even if that was the case, it can't be serine 195. It can't be the backbone atoms of the oxyanion hole either. They're backbone atoms. They're amides. Amides, have, have we mentioned this before? Amides aren't acids or bases, right? So they're not going to protonate or deprotonate. So that can't be it. So it has to be something that actually you're not even aware of at the moment. It has to be an important alpha amino group that hasn't been mentioned. Again, this would not be a fair test, a question on a test. I'd have to give you more information. But I'm not giving you the test right now. I'm telling you a story about chymotrypsin. And boys and girls, here's the last part of the story. Chymotrypsin is a trimer. It has three subunits, an A chain, uh, subunits or chains. It has an A chain, a B chain, and a C chain trimer. 
Isoleucine 16, I know, why is number 16 at the very, uh, why is amino acid number 16 the first amino acid of the B chain? Well, because they're numbering it, all the amino acids in order. So the A chain has, looks like 1 through 13, or I'm not sure where 14 and 15 are at. They must be in there as well. But uh, amino acid 16 is at the amino terminal end of the B chain. That's what this is telling us. And look at all those disulfide bonds in chymotrypsin. Interesting. Okay. Oh, so here's the story. Okay, you would have never been able to come up with this on your own, but I'm telling you the story now. Isoleucine 16 has this alpha amino group. It forms an ionic interaction. It can be in the acid form, right? And oh, it'll be in the acid form at what pH values? probably below 9. And then once you get past 9, you go to the base form of the alpha amino group, and you don't get an ionic interaction. And this alpha amino group, being in the acid form and protonated, forms a very important ionic interaction that stabilizes the... the active site of the enzyme. It stabilizes the active site of the enzyme. So what we know is if you lose that ionic interaction, if you lose the ionic interaction, you disrupt the active site, enzyme activity goes down. So this plot in the top right shows that perfectly. If you get more of the alpha amino group in the base form, you lose the ionic interaction. If you lose the ionic interaction, the active site's not formed. If the active site is not formed, enzyme activity uh, cannot proceed accordingly. And so you get a major drop off in the activity of the enzyme. All right. I think the very bottom of this page here on the video may be cut off. You may see a little bit, but on the finished notes, it says will cause the active site to be malformed, which leads to decreased enzyme activity. All right, that's chapter six. Thank you.